good morning to all i know many of my colleagues friends teachers um school owners management people everybody is there uh, to be part of uh, this presentation which uh, has uh, set me thinking for a long time and uh, there were a few things which i sounded off with number of people across the world and everybody came forth and they said this is something that we should discuss we should uh, not just present it but we should discuss and ensure that each educational institute uh, contributes towards the sustainability of education in the true sense so when we were discussing this thus evolved the role of culture and branding which uh, so far <laughs> is uh, not very prominently discussed uh, role of culture to certain extent yes uh, but branding is still considered um, not uh, to be spoken about because it is usually uh, related to revenue making and they feel that branding is related to something that you sell so this was an interesting journey when i had to do this and uh, the thought that came up was why people want uh, sustainability of education institutes because their the infrastructure remains the the whole system like we are, if we look at 500 years down the line even the word 500 years is a shocking thing to talk about where we say oh my god none of us sitting over here through the presentation are going to be there for after 500 years but somehow the infrastructure will remain so what is it that we are looking forward to in terms of sustainability of our schools things will change people will change a uh, lot of technological interventions so what is it so then the you know the idea or the thought came to okay um can we look at the school as of now and try to make it the best if you go through website where you know uh, parents who are shifting locations or want to get the best schools for their children they browse which is the best school in this area and uh, often for different reasons different schools pop up mm, and uh, uh, it definitely doesn't give clarity on what the best which one is the best school for interacting with educators across the world what i realized is each school is a best school each school is doing a lot of work a lot of good heart and intention is going into making their schools the best school in the world so first and foremost let me congratulate all the educators the teachers the students the parents the school heads the principals the management all of them are you know they are so carried away carried I mean, they are sort of enlightened individuals in terms of giving their best to children who walk in because as parents they uh, have the most precious thing in their hand that is their child and when they hand over their child to us at educational institute we have to make sure that we make their dreams come true our dreams come true through the child so we all are stakeholders who will make this happen and thus the role of culture and branding comes in and what is culture what is the culture of your school can we just spare few moments to think um this question uh, i was thinking and last evening i just uh, happened to share it with uh, few of my friends who happen to be school owners who are um, educators teachers principals who are also the service providers to education system and i was flooded with lots and lots of things that they shared in terms of culture of the school so i thought instead of getting into the jargon of defin defining the culture of the school let me share the best cultures that exist in the schools across the world which uh, you know just in last what do you say 8 10 hours which people shared uh, on whatsapp with me 
and through emails and uh, through telephone. So collating all that so that we understand, okay, fine, these are the different ways culture exists in different schools and how we can pick up the best and uh, make that as a culture of our school. And, we are, and this is also a platform to share the best culture that exists in these schools who have shared. They've been really kind to do that. And coming to what is branding of your school, uh, very, very surprisingly, I got answers only from a couple of, a couple, couple of institutes or school leaders uh, on this. So maybe we will look into that uh, as we run through the slides. So most of them came back and they said, you know, we have these five people in place and uh, culture basically is about people. So uh, the management, the principal, teachers, students, and parents, they all constitute the culture of the school and everyone unanimously agreed these are the five very, very important factors or people who make the culture of a school. So let's look at a few questions which immediately popped up. I think all of us can read that and uh, browse through. What will a parent calling for admission get to hear from your school? The first time a parent calls up. What will be the experience of a parent walking into your school seeking admission? Your two cases are there, during school hours and after school hours. During school hours, the parents come meet the people at the reception. After school hours, the parent interacts with the security guard. Is he ready to take the questions from a parent seeking admission from your school? What will a candidate seeking job in your school go back and share about your school to their families and friends? To their family and friends, there are so many candidates who come for you know interview to our schools so what is the experience they go back and share do all of them get jobs no not because they are not good it's because the requirement of our schools are different from what is available with that candidate so none of the candidates are not eligible it is just that the requirements didn't match but when they go back what kind of statement about our school Will they share with their family? You know what? I went for an interview to this particular school and they treated me so well. And uh, though I didn't get the opportunity to work there, but I'm sure it's a very good school. Do they go back and say that? Or do they say that, you know what? They called me, made me sit there for hours. There was no one to attend to me. And I was made to write papers and papers. And uh, finally, they called me, asked two questions and just, you know, send me back home. and. They didn't even let me know when uh, I'll be informed about the results. So this also forms uh, a big part of culture and branding of your school. Then what will a service provider tell when he or she meets principal of other schools about your school? We have a lot of service providers who keep pinging us for an appointment. Us, I mean, I mean the school leaders. Maybe I'm putting myself in that category for the time being. And uh, mm, uh, as school leaders or management, uh, we keep receiving these emails, requesting for an appointment to showcase their products, to talk to them, to explore if they can work with us, if they can contribute in any way in making learning teaching experience better for our organizations. So when they seek an appointment, what kind of response do we give from our school? Uh, we give an appointment and we are too busy with something. The service provider keeps waiting. I have got friends who have been entrepreneurs and great friends of mine who have shared, you know, Nirmala, uh, we went, we go to schools and uh, we just keep, though we have an appointment, we keep waiting for hours and hours to meet. And uh, then, you know, they just put us across to one of their uh, coordinators and uh, who may or may not be, uh, you know, the decision maker. And then we keep following up. So because uh, trust me, uh, these people, the service providers are big, big brand ambassadors for your school. 
they are the ones who co-meet principals and the management of other schools. And they are the ones who can actually talk nice things about you and your school. So treating them well, making that experience great is again uh, a big way to tap the culture and branding of a school. Then uh, what will a student remember most about your school when he or she joins other school? Wow. Who else can be a greater brand ambassador for your school than your own student moving into another school? There have been cases where, you know, the parents have shared that, ma'am, you know what? We took our child to another school and the child just refused to walk in. They said, no, I want to go back to this school. What happened? Or, uh, you know, they still share, you know what, over there, uh, this is how things used to happen. We enjoyed it the most this way. And um, uh, just to quote, there was uh, this uh, parent sharing that, you know, I'm sitting in the sports day over here and I really miss the way uh, it used to happen in your place. Everything used to be on time, time management. About uh, during the sports day, something which uh, children do talk about. So uh, you may think Nirmala is talking about all these things. Yes, because I have done a lot of research, a lot of questionnaires have been floated before I'm doing this presentation to you. I've talked to thousands of students and uh, hundreds of parents uh, and uh, more than 50 uh, school leaders and management and thus I'm doing this presentation. So these are the thoughts and feelings that were shared and these are the major ones which emerged. And uh, students, they go and talk about the washrooms in our school. They go and talk about how the teachers used to treat them and every small thing and when somebody is moving from their school back into their old school uh, there is a lot of vibes that can be passed on so how do we manage that how do we work on that is again uh, the students plus students when they go for the trips and picnics uh, how do they behave is very very important in public places that also adds to the branding of your school that um, uh, because they are wearing the school uniform, they are identified uh, through the ID cards, the name of the school is printed on the uniform. So when they are out there, uh, they are, uh, that is the way. So it's not, many people feel that, you know, oh, I have to give get students only from two kilometer or five kilometer radius. Why should I bother if my children are traveling, um, say 10, 20 kilometers for a school trip, how they behave? It's not that way. It's the word of mouth, whether they seek admission in your school or not. Uh, the important thing is how children behave elsewhere so that people say, look at their uniform and they say, you know what, these students, uh, they, they were all very good in their behavior. They had good values. They didn't, you know, uh, throw trash around. They behaved well. So that is another thing that can be um, considered. And uh, oh, another person who's very, very important is the teacher. When a teacher from your school joins other school, what will he or she miss the most? Or what will he or she tell about your school? Here, uh, a lot of culture she or he carries to the other school and create a positive impact. Uh, so, uh, how uh, they are um, made to feel in the school is very, very important. Are they uh, treated uh, with a smile by everyone, uh, especially the head of the organization and uh, or, or, you know, they are treated only for the kind of job they are doing. So it's very, very important to understand that and uh, it's uh, it's something that is reflecting the culture of the school please remember when the teachers move uh, it reflects the culture of the school that how they have been treating everybody so the humanistic approach is something that we keep talking about and very beautifully it comes out in the presentation also the humanistic approach to uh, education which many people have shared and I take the liberty of uh, I'll take the liberty of sharing all that with you 
in the following slides with their names and names of the schools they belong to. And you will, by the end of this presentation, I'm sure you will definitely have your notepad uh, with a lot of ideas that you can implement in your school or uh, you have my email ID where you can just write back and say that, you know what, we are doing this also. I'm sure all of you are doing a lot of wonderful things which we can share because I remember um, as a school leader when I wanted to, a lot of people invited me uh, and I used to uh, visit visited a lot of schools, visited more than 80 schools across India and abroad to learn from everywhere. Surprisingly, a lot of things done in government schools are amazing and I would recommend you know visiting a government school to learn how children are independent learners over there they manage their morning assemblies so beautifully trust me that is a pleasure to attend do not miss the morning assemblies of government schools where you'll be stunned to see that um, you know uh, the private sector we belong to in schools uh, there's a lot of uh, training happening in and you will see that in these schools, how beautifully they do it. Their calendars are very nicely done. And uh, I've tried to emulate it and share it at many places. So that is something that we can be. We'll come back to these questions. So I'm just starting with these questions and uh, we will come back to these questions again towards the end of this presentation. Um, so this, I felt, symbolizes the school culture. What you see is um, the school culture, which uh, uh, usually we see the school culture. Uh, I've heard people say it is the root of a plant, but somehow felt that the root of the plant can be unearthed. But what you see in this picture is the school culture, which is very much part of the big organization that you are in. What is visible outside is minuscule, uh, but the whole visibility, whatever is visible to people as a school, as your school or college, is definitely what is under the water, what is underneath. That is the school culture. And see, just see how, this, you know, what proportionate of uh, the whole structure is underwater. And that is your school culture. So it is, not, it is nothing that can be ignored. And uh, very, very, uh, you know, happily I can share that all the schools have been working very tenaciously, very meticulously to build their school cultures. So uh, through this presentation, only thing that is happening is we are going to collate everything. We are going to take a sheet of paper and write down all that forms the culture of the school and then uh, do a self audit and understand how this can be made sustainable or one is sustainable and one is evolving. You have to make your school culture evolving. It's not that something that you have been doing for a long time has to continue just because it is the school culture. You can evolve, you can come out with new ideas, but only a small word of caution. If in case there is a change in leadership, this is something which, uh, we ha which has been visible. The new leader taking over tries to completely change the school culture, which causes major damage to the school. What is visible over here is a huge part of the school, which is the school culture. So if it can be done in a sustainable manner, if it is a new school, great, go ahead with your ideas, explore, do it. But if you're going to take over an existing school, please understand the culture of the school. Please understand that the whole portion that you see underwater cannot be turned over in few months. It has to be understood. It has to be chiseled very, very slowly and then made a difference. So this is something that, uh, because as school leaders are also part of this presentation as management is, so hearing all these wonderful ideas that others have shared, everybody wants to change it today. So let's not do that. Let's all go in a very, very sustainable manner. So I just tried to get one slide on what is school culture because I didn't want to get the definition, the jargon, and uh, there is big, big explanation on difference between culture and climate. Let's not get into all that. Let's make it very, very simple. And uh, that is uh, school culture is about norms developed over time. Please remember this word over time. It is not something which is developed overnight. 
So it's about shared attitudes, attitudes of each stakeholder, right from the security guard to the management, how each one talks about the school is very, very important. So what kind of attitude do they share? How do they make people feel when they enter your school? How do they make people feel when they hear about your school? So the people, the security guard is your brand ambassador, your service provider, your teacher, your student, everyone will talk about it. So what they, they share the responsibility of the school culture, the values and the norms that you set, the belief system that you have in the school, different schools. Uh, uh, you will get to see uh, in the slides that, uh, you know, there are schools which are in the rural area. There they are working on very different culture, whereas uh, the schools in the urban, the schools abroad, they are working on different areas. So the school culture depends on the geographical location of the school, the kind of people they are catering to. In, in, there is an interesting uh, example uh, uh, which we will be sharing in branding where we will discuss about complete contrast. They have NRA community as their parents, but the school follows a completely traditional uh, culture, which, uh, which is highlighting the how they have built the brand of the school. That's a very beautiful example. We'll come across. Uh, then uh, what are the expectations? A uh, lot of parents walk in with expectation. First thing is my child has to be the first in the class now. How many children can be first in the class? Yes, all 30 can be first in the class. Do you believe that? Yes, they can be first in whatever they are good at. So let's change the mindset of people that first in the class doesn't mean only the academic excellence. First in the class also means, you know, a child who is not first in academics is first in music, first in sports, first in art, first in developing technology, first in, uh, you know, uh, research or uh, first in uh, dialogue delivery, first in anything. So it, ex expectations of the parents uh, impact the culture of the school and the branding of the school as shared uh, by Sawmill. So uh, what happens is when we deliver, when we explain this to the parents that yes, your child is first in the class and the parent feels very nice about it then the relationship that we have also forms the culture of the school, uh, that each of us are doing a great job. Then tradition of a school, uh, the way each uh, event is conducted, the annual function, the sports, the admissions, the parent feedback, the PT meeting. There is an interesting uh, example of the complete PT meeting conducted by students. You will get to see that in the following slide. And we always had this closed mindset saying that the parent teacher meet means only parent and teacher. And there is a beautiful example shared by a school where they say that, no, it's the child who shares his or her report to the parents. So that there comes the owners. So it, that is the tradition of the school. That's how things develop. So you will get to see that and many more other interesting um, ideas. And uh, the norm of a school are what impact the way things operate. So each thing is threaded. Like uh, we uh, uh, see the horizontal and the vertical threads in our uh, costumes. That is how each thing is threaded in as the culture of the school. Uh, this is another one just to leave you all with lots and lots of questions because I feel until unless you are posting a lot of questions to uh, us, uh, you can type in uh, your questions as we are sharing all this so that we can take your questions by the end of this presentation around about 12, 12, 5. And uh, this is the culture which can be accidental or intentional. Should the culture be accidental or intentional? Uh, so if the culture is accidental, then what happens? The activities are based on assumptions that you know yeah this is how things are going to happen this is how my sports are, sports day has to be so this is how we are going to plan or are we going to engage some kind of a research base where we say that this is the outcome i want for my school for my sports day so how should i plan it 
and go about finding how sports days are conducted across in different places. There is no harm in calling up a colleague principal and finding out, uh, okay, how is this happening? Can you please share? Can I come and visit your sports day? And let us come out of the field that only if I'm invited as a chief guest, can I go and attend the sports day or annual function? Trust me, um, I have visited a lot of schools where I was not invited as a chief guest, but I just went as an audience just to understand and learn uh, how different you know, activities happen across the organizations. And academic goals deteriorate to a wish list, and that is what we shared about the coming first in the class. Academic goals are credible, and the focus is on results. So every every child can achieve from what he or she was from yesterday to today and today to tomorrow. Missions and goals are ignored in the accidental culture, whereas when it is intentional, when the whole team sits on a table, sits around a table, discusses, okay, this is what should be the culture of our school. So we start working backwards to, because we want our school to be known for this, 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 how do we work with a blueprint and start working on that? You have to make a blueprint for everything. And then uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the decisions uh, that we take. Uh, is it only in a closed room with four or five people around you? Or do you engage any kind of feedback mechanisms uh, for uh, taking decisions where you engage a lot of people? So if you, these things raise a lot of questions. You can post your questions on the right hand uh, corner where there is uh, a pop-up for you to type your questions. Now, let us look at the five characteristics of great school culture. So I have got 55, I should say, <laughs> but just closing in with how they are connected to the management principal, the parent, student, and the teacher. Uh, wow. This is the best part of the presentation because lots and lots of ideas from different schools are shared. And uh, let's start with the leadership. Leadership is the management, the principal, and I feel every teacher, every student is a leader in a school. But do we do any kind of audit? Do we do any kind of survey as to where our school is? What is the culture of our school? So it will be nice if you can you know, spend some time in a short audit and uh, what is my school popular for? Why do parents want admission in my school? And there are schools where you know you can sit down and write why parents, why the admissions are going down, why parents are not opting for my school anymore, why are they going to other schools? You have to write this on a piece of paper and try to work around it. Is my school in line with the vision and mission of the school, or do I need to revisit the vision and mission? Trust me. Uh, there is no harm in rewriting the vision and mission of the school. And let that not become just a set of words which is printed on the diary. Let that become the DNA of the school. So write it in a manner where it becomes the DNA of the school. So don't do it for the sake of putting it up and printing it and taking a printout and putting it elsewhere. Brainstorm with the management. Ask questions that, you know, what do you want the school to be? Uh, because end of the day, it is the management who have made a big investment in terms of uh, finances and time. And, uh, you know, it is their dream of this school, which they are handing over to the school leaders. So what is their dream of this school? For the new upcoming school, it is easy to communicate. But the existing schools which are there for decades, it's good time to revisit uh, and ask questions to the management. Are we there on the right track. Yeah, we are doing a lot of good things. We are known as one of the best schools for 20 years. But what is it? Are we looking at the future or are we just complacent and happy with the fact that we are doing good? Then uh, uh, you can collate these points. Like, for example, like, you know, you ask, bring, have a brainstorming session, pick up about 15, 20 adjectives, shortlist that to about three, four, and decide that, you know, this is what we are going to focus on. And a lot of transparency is needed when you're doing this audit. It cannot be done uh, by saying that, you know, yeah, we had a discussion and we decided this should be the culture of the school. No, there has to be a lot of things going through the school and it takes a lot of time. But definitely the output is going to be something you're going to be very, very proud of. 
when you do this audit and try to understand what is the culture of your school right now and what your, you want your culture to be. Or rather, look at the other way around. Look around and find out what is the expectation over there. Do parents want only children who are good in academics or do they also want them to do well in sports, art, music? And do they want a holistic child? What do they want? Because if you see, uh, visually imagine a child spends 14 years of their life in the school, 14 long years. And what is the output? Is the child confident? Is the child ready to ask questions? Is the child ready to explore? Is the child uh, happy, most important? Happy doesn't mean that uh, all PT periods. Happy also means that I have achieved, I have improved from yesterday to today and today to tomorrow. Here I would like to quote uh, Ms. Usha Kumar Swami, the founder principal. She was sharing that they have a very um, beautiful system, culture of conducive learning environment. She has created a common email ID and the password is shared with the complete team. And anyone can pose a question. So she will never come to know who has posed that question, who has asked the doubt or who has given a suggestion. So uh, there are a lot of, lot of pros and cons, but still, for her, it is working well, where uh, she's able to hear from all her teachers and they do not have fear of rejection. That if I, like in a meeting when you ask teachers, okay, do you have some suggestions? There are very few who come up and speak. But in such a system, what she shared was, they, they feel free to write, you know, ma'am, when this happened, this didn't go well. So can you please consider that? So those kind of things she shared. And another principal from Gujarat, he was sharing with me. He didn't want his name to be mentioned. So he was sharing. He has a very anonymous feedback system. He just rolls out sheets of paper to his teachers. And they tick the answers. So while ticking, you don't even know who's ticking it. So that is another mechanism of feedback they are using. And uh, this is a beautiful statement where they say that if you are battling for greatness, always carry love, respect, and humility in your armory. And that is visible in most of the school leaders and a very, very uh, uh, you know, wonderful person. I know Mr. Ashok Pandey, the principal of Alcon International School. There are a lot of things that I learned from his school. And he was sharing that they have a culture of learning among teachers. They, they go out for all sorts of training programs. They are empowered. And he was sharing that you know, there is no fear of them leaving the school just because I've empowered them. They become lifelong learners. So it is not that they're standing on the pedestal and saying that, children, this is what you have to learn, but they themselves are learning. They themselves are doing number of courses across the, from across the world, Fulbright, and many, many, there's a huge list which Sarah had shared. Then there is culture of team building. This is across levels, the pre-primary, primary. Usually in schools, these are islands. Pre-primary teacher will not go to the middle school. Middle school teacher will not collaborate with the senior school. But here they have collaborative learning and sharing where they all come together and they plan for each and every event in the school that builds the team that he has. He has a wonderful team, I know that. And then culture of education for life against livelihood. This is about self-actualization. Sorry, there is a zero there along with O. And uh, the culture of you know, uh, it's not that what you will earn after you finish your graduation. It's the learning for life, all the values, the practices, the best practices that happen. So that is what is very, very important in uh, the learning that can happen in schools. Like uh, he was sharing uh, that uh, these students, they see their future beyond the subsistence. They're preparing children for life. There is self-actualization happening, developing a world vision and new goals that they have to achieve as students. Then uh, Prashant sir, Mr. Kitpule, who's the principal with the ITC group, he was sharing, uh, we have been colleagues before, and he was sharing this culture of being sensitive to nature. Trust me, it's not an easy thing to go zero plastic zone in your school because there, uh, I remember a student in my school coming and asking, ma'am, you say zero plastic and, uh, you know, why these plastic folders in our school? And immediately we had to shift the jute folders. So there are a lot of things that happen. And he shared this wonderful experience of zero plastic zone, which is a very challenging task. 
and uh, they have gardens which are, use only the compost fertilizers, not the artificial ones. And Rajni, another good friend of mine from British Council, currently she's with the Harvest International School and she was sharing this from her previous organization, Meridian, and she shared that the culture of managing resources, what was talked to them, where they were sent for a team outing and uh, with limited resources, and they were asked to manage. So it built a lot of bond among teachers there was sharing of emotion. There was uh, like, how do you manage with this? What is available to us? And uh, at times less actually leads to more. Uh, so we feel that if we are able to give the best of things in our organization, the most expensive things to our teachers, it is not there where I visited uh, Mahatma Gandhi International School in uh, Ahmedabad. And that is a wonderful school to uh, learn um, maximum utilization of resources if you want to learn it's amazing to see how that building even the floor the walls uh, everything is maximized it's an amazing experience to be there and what do you mean by the culture of the school here we are looking at the teachers how do the teachers impact they impact directly the students and the parents trust me they are the greatest stakeholders in terms of culture of the school uh, so engaging them in brainstorming sessions on how they should talk to the students, uh, how each topic can be uh, correlated to the ethos of the school, uh, repeating it and creating a culture of appreciation by them you know, for students is very, very essential. What is the choice of words they have when they talk to parents? Uh, like they should not use any negative statement because no parent likes to listen to anything negative about their child. So are we uh, training our teachers to do that? Many times it happens uh, that parents come back and they say, you know what, your teacher said this about my child. And then uh, you're wondering how come, you know, this was not uh, practiced. So it is not very easy because they, as teachers, we all come from different places and uh, there is a different culture of every school. So it is very, very important that this is, um, you know, becoming, uh, especially when there is a transition, a new teacher joining in, he or she doesn't know how the school works. So a lot of engagement in induction, uh, if you can have a document which can be shared, that also happens that they just read and it's not there. But engaging this teacher, giving a mentor teacher and uh, um, helping her go through the school walk around experience matters a lot and uh, retention of teachers impacts uh, the school culture so if they keep moving out because they are not adjusting in the school it is not good for the organization how the teachers behave during the seminars presentations conferences they attend they go out and speak about your school so what do they speak about the school it cannot be something that you can parrot them. It has to be something that they have experienced in the school. So what kind of culture would you like to create for the teachers uh, is essential. So culture is the most powerful uh, source of leverage for bringing about change in the school. So Zavera, uh, ma'am uh, from Indian Academy, Dubai, ma'am was sharing that culture where there is pursuit of excellence. The teachers are allow allowed to move around. She was sharing when there was a competition from Gems School, uh, the two teachers who were competing, they were sharing their knowledge and there was no sense of competition among themselves, though they knew that they both are competitors from the same school. So this is the culture that can, that she's been able to develop. Then Mr. Ayapanayar, sir, from uh, uh, BGS, sorry, I'm wrong. I have written BDG, it is BGS, NPS, Bangalore. Mm, and so was sharing that there is a tell me why culture, the culture of question where the teachers are not covering the syllabus. They're uncovering the syllabus in the morning assembly. They can ask questions. Then they come back. They have a, you know, sharing of uh, what are the probable answers. And it's a beautiful culture where there is no fear that if I give a wrong answer, I will be laughed at or anything of that sort. And they also have adopted a, visual, a school for visually impaired. And this is this complete drive is from teachers and it helps them build empathy where these children go and interact the primary school. And Gunjan, uh, another friend from 
the Samishta International School Hyderabad, he was sharing that, uh, you know, he had a lot of trouble with children not putting the desk properly furniture at the end of the day. And he brought the culture of self-belief and, and he empowered these children that they are responsible for this. And until as they do that, you know, the next thing doesn't happen and how each thing is integrated. Then Bharti ma'am from Hindustan International School, she was sharing that the um, school gives complete liberty to the teachers to develop the culture and they are the brand ambassadors. They are the ones who actually take the owners and they make every child walking into the school very, very happy. This is something very, very interesting about the student's point of view, four to one. In a classroom environment, you should be praising kids four times as often as you are correcting them. What is the culture of your school for a new student who walks in? The student comes, takes admissions, pays fees, and sent to the class teacher. What happens after that? Does the school uh, uh, give any kind of induction program to the child? Is there a, cul uh, a culture of sharing and handholding for first one year of that child, or at least for the first six months? Uh, do you pin up uh, the you know best uh, qualities of this particular child in the classroom? Or do you take these children throughout the campus, show them the washroom, show them the labs, show them different areas in the school, or share experiences? Or uh, who should be the point of contact for the child to know uh, for the notes and other things? And uh, what is the culture in the washroom? Trust me, uh, a lot of impact happens on the child, how he or she uh, gets to be treated over there. And then uh, is there a zero tolerance policy in the school about any kind of verbal or physical abuse? Is the child made aware of that as the new student walks in? Uh, does, uh, does the school provide an opportunity for the child to express what the interest, except for the form which the parent fills, my child was uh, scored, uh, you know, um, came, got a second prize in this activity or third prize or first prize in that. That remains the admission form, but does the school have any kind of, uh, you know, facility where this uh, is shared with the different teachers? For example, if the child is good in sports, is it shared with the sports teacher about the new student who is taking admission? If the child is good in music, art, dance, whatever, is it shared with the respective teachers about the new student? So that can also form the culture of school. Very interesting uh, example is culture of smiley, which uh, Seema ma'am has shared that uh, this particular uh, school that follows the culture of smiley and uh, where, you know, desirable attitudes and behaviors are rewarded. I mean, what a wonderful way. And each child tries to get a smiley. And if they collect 10 smileys, then they get a student badge in the assembly. And 25 smileys, they get a feel proud card. And parents also get to, you know, uh, uh, share the change in behavior at home and maintain a smiley chart. And the class with maximum smileys gets uh, all paid tour. This is wonderful, ma'am, where, uh, you know, she had shared it uh, in the ACER magazine and it was a wonderful experience because we face a lot of challenge in terms of student behavior. And this is one approach that she has shared and it has been highly successful, she was telling me. And Veda Ma'am from Coop Public School, she was sharing that the culture of belonging to nature, where they encourage children to run barefoot marathon and Coop being a tourist location destination, they are... Uh, you know, encouraged to speak about the culture of Kurk with a lot of pride. Amazing, ma'am. And Sumali, ma'am, from uh, uh, Silic uh, Silicon City Academy at Bangalore, uh, she was sharing they have culture of invigilator free examinations. They have self regulated library. They do not have boards like silence, please do not make noise, and all that. Children manage all by themselves. And there is Peace Corner for mindful moments whenever there is a correction needed. Children are, uh, you know, uh, given an opportunity to go there and self-reflect and come out of their own apprehensions. And as teachers, we have the opportunity to foster positive changes to the everyday experience in our schools. Investing time in improving school culture is worth the effect. Trust me, all those lovely friends who are there in this presentation or who will be hearing it to you uh, this later because you know, they have something else scheduled for this hour. 
investing time in improving school culture is worth the effect. It is an amazing, amazing thing to do, which you can start immediately. And Nija, a wonderful friend of mine, who is the IED PYP coordinator with Meridian, she was sharing the culture of empathy, where uh, you know children with special needs, how they form buddies and take care of each other. And raising leaders where they have adopted the uh, Nachiketa Tapovan school for the underprivileged. And these grade three and four students sit with the children of the other school and they help them develop the reading habit. This is amazing. And Sita, ma'am, you are a wonderful, wonderful senior and the former principal of ESBB Millennium School. She was sharing. They have a culture of Bhajan Sandhya where the parents, students, and also the grandparents, what a wonderful way are engaged in this and there is a culture of collaboration where um, they uh, do the millennium fiesta which is hosted by class 8 sponsored by class uh, and the sponsors are brought in by class 11 and 12 and the commerce department students they manage the balance sheet so this is a complete example of collaboration i'm sure you all those over uh, who are in the presentation have great examples of collaboration in your school. Then Seema ma'am was sharing uh, from JRK uh, school. She was saying there is a culture of self-sufficiency where they uh, help children uh, grow. Uh, they had a project where they help children grow spinach and raise funds. And this amount is used for a social cause. So it definitely builds a culture of self-sufficiency among children where they know that uh, they can be future entrepreneurs. And uh, Dr. Bindu from Vidya Vihar, Kerala, I had an opportunity to visit Mam school and spend some, spend some lovely time with the team over there. They have a culture of entrepreneurship. This was amazing. I mean, the way of 50 cent land is leased by the school and they grow or cultivate paddy and children are engaged, teachers are engaged. They grow and they, you know, get into entrepreneurship uh, behavior where they learn how all these things happen and they sell it. They have raised 50 bags of vegetables and they engage in high tech farming solutions. Yes, uh, agriculture is highly ignored and uh, it is going to be the future. Agriculture, not in terms of farming that existed ages ago, but agriculture in terms of high tech technology, which uh, will bring in, rev which is already brought in a lot of revolution in this. There's a beautiful statement I cannot miss, which says we cannot hold kids accountable for things we have never told them we expect. So set very clear expectations. What is the culture of the school? It, it cannot be enforced. It has to be emulated by everyone, right from the management and the school leader. It has to be emulated. They should get to see it with their eyes happening around. Behavior should be treated like academics students have to be taught the skills they need so a lot of effort has to be put in it cannot happen overnight trust me like lalita ma'am from renaissance school bulans are two extremes you will see like uh, these are rural schools that's what i was explaining uh, sharing with you initially rural schools have a very different view to culture ma'am was sharing that the girl child is trained and given opportunity to compete with urban school students so it builds a lot of self-esteem in these children. This is a culture of excellence in rural schools. Because uh, in urban schools, usually we think all boys and girls are treated equally. So we don't have to bring anything new. Or it exists and we are ignorant of it. But, this, but making that as a culture of the school definitely can bring a lot of... Because... Uh, there is a lot of debate going on between girl, boy, this to be done, that to be done. Uh, you have to teach the boys how to treat girls. You have to teach the girls how to treat boys, all that. So definitely the onus is on, also on us, I should say. And uh, um, my very, very good friend, Niyata Krishnan, who's a head teacher at uh, Vivian Fowler Memorial Girls College at uh, Nigeria, she took time out to you know, share this. They have a culture of introspection where they say, who am I? This one question is posed to every child, every girl who takes admission to this college. And this is such a powerful question she was sharing that uh, they get to understand who they are and the culture of interaction with the trailblazers, the people who have not 
only uh, you know achieved uh, monetarily but people who have achieved uh, in the society are brought in and these girls get to interact and a beautiful culture of transformation where numerous stories of shy girls going on to become role models as achievers she was sharing and there comes the most terrorizing part which uh, we talk about that is engagement of parents wow how the parent feels after you know sharing them or rather handing over their most precious thing of their lives uh, to the hands of school how do they feel do they feel secure do they feel fine do they feel everything is happening or is there some concern still yes you may say that you know it is impossible to satisfy them impossible to cater to the a big big long lengthy wish list of all the parents out there and uh, making them feel uh, that yes everything the school is doing is right because there is always a comparison you know what the school next door is doing this then why don't you try that and you know what my child is uh, not uh, good at that i'm speaking this also as a parent and my child is not good at this not good at that and the teacher and lot of things lot of expectation management is needed when you are engaging parents and godwin and other uh, good friend of mine from uh, tirunal veli i visited his school also it's a very very beautifully um, managed school and uh, i was there with him for the global teacher accreditation awards and uh, great learning experience i had with you godwin and uh, they have a culture of independent learning that is no parent uh, no parents to support homework that is homework is a diagnostic he shares that homework is a diagnostic tool ma'am for teachers and uh, you know, re reinforcement for students so it is completely uh, you know uh, the onus is on the student and uh, i i want to interact with the parents and understand how they feel uh, when they don't have the worry of parents because we have got parents who come back very late and uh, um, they they often say that we are not getting time only weekends we get time so this is a beautiful culture of independent learning that he has developed and he has also fixed evening play time for all the students he says there is no fear of exams because the children themselves they plan their year the exam dates the timetable so there is culture of participation culture of accepting mistakes because it is based on a lot of trust they come forth and they share that yes i have done this wrong because most of the time we spend in schools trying to find out okay has this child actually done it or not so and the next slide yes uh, a lot of my interaction uh, with parents has been the culture of ownership that we have been able to develop because uh, a school which is far far off from city getting the sources getting the teachers we had created a database of uh, parents who could come and be an be uh, an art and craft teacher or a grandparent who could come and do the storytelling or uh, uh, if class 11 uh, we are not able to find a teacher in a particular subject then we can get some parent to come and do the lecture or session so schools which uh, have a uh, pair who use parents as resource um, we we never dreaded parents we never thought that you know they are on the other side of the table we always accepted them as part of the school who who would actually enable the school to be, to take to the next level and trust me i have gotten to a lot of debate from different school leaders who disagree with me on this and i totally respect them for that because different experiences are there with parents but end of the day um once they understand that uh, it is in the interest of my child and once we make them feel if you see the flag over there it says we need you so once parents realize that yes the school needs me they feel nice when i'm over here and uh, always make it a point to meet the parents when you give an appointment and the greatest uh, 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 you know thing you can do uh, is make them feel nice have a nice cup of coffee with them and uh, make them feel really nice that their child is safe and secure uh, with you around and a uh, culture of ownership builds the culture of the school also so fostering a positive school culture is something that uh, we all have got 
gone through, seen so many examples, and all those who are sitting over there, you will have hundred more examples with you, which I would love to hear from you. you can mail it to me, and uh, uh, the five people who are engaged, you have seen how management, principal, teachers, students, and parents can be engaged in developing the culture. Now, after knowing that all this can be done, uh, this is a very important statement. You don't change culture through emails and memos. You can change it through relationships, one conversation at a time. This is this is what I was uh, mentioning when I showed you the picture of the school culture, where I said, sudden if the new leadership takes over and tries to change the whole culture overnight, or for an existing school, or uh, somebody comes over and they said that I'm going to change the culture because. Uh, I heard this presentation and I want to change the culture. It cannot happen overnight. It should not happen. It should be one conversation at a time. And this is a quick glimpse of the uh, audit that we can do. And I have done it many times. And uh, this is very, very um, essential. And uh, it has helped me primarily as a school leader uh, where I could evaluate. It was done in a very, very subtle manner through questionnaires and relevant uh, you know, uh, interactions with the, all the stakeholders, talking to them, asking the right questions, and uh, then collating the data. Uh, it, this will be available online, so you can refer later. Now, branding, uh, I, I didn't get too many responses. Uh, but uh, uh, interestingly, I got response from the service provider, Sobel, the co-founder of Sports. He was sharing that the, the branding depends on the founder's philosophy. Yes, I agree with you, Sobel, on this, because the founders have invested their time and money and space, everything, their life, rather, to put up a school and uh, where it depends on what they believe strongly in uh, what should their school speak about or what should people speak about when they talk about their school is branding. So aspirations of par parents which gradually shifts to students also forms and the, you know, it, there has to be a balanced education between values, sports as part of education and scholarship. And, and he made a, a statement which is uh, very, very strong and he says branding should flow warm culture beautiful i'm glued onto this statement where uh, you know it definitely the culture actually leads to branding it's not the other way around where you spend lakhs and lakhs of rupees on putting hoardings and everything and you say that you know this is what my school is no let the culture of the school talk about the brand that the school is and another friend of mine anand he was sharing with me that school leaders have to go beyond convention and explore brands. He, all the challenges he was sharing, meeting with school leaders, like you know, uh, it's very very difficult for uh, the entrepreneurs to explain their product. So if school leaders can uh, spare some time, and they can they should rather know about the different products that exist in education system instead of just relying on one or two that may be recommended by someone both work both the way it works he was sharing and ram who's another good friend of mine and founder of e Ambulum, who has taken art and culture beyond the boundaries of missions by going online with it he was sharing that you have to think deeply of school branding all the school leaders and management and teachers and everyone and create independent thinkers out of the students than those contented only with academics and live a stressful life so Brand should be something that you can say has uh, made a difference in somebody's life, not just um, produced a year-end academic record. And there comes something very, very beautiful. Uh, Devya Arne and Pushpa from Harishri Vidyashram, they shared some beautiful insights into branding, how they have done. You remember I, in the beginning of the uh, presentation, I had shared that there is something like this coming up. So this is it. They have student ambassadors who take pair, uh, the visitors around the school. They do not have a coordinator taking the visitors around. When they had Professor Howard Gardner uh, walk into their school, uh, the students took him around and he could question them and ask them as to what the school is, how it happens, and children respond to it. And that's a beautiful culture that they have developed. And the student-led uh, PT meeting 
this is amazing. Um, the instead of the teachers sharing the report cards, students make presentation of their performance and they share with the parents that you know what this is how I have performed. This is how I got support from the teacher, and this is these are my efforts that I have put in, and these this is my report. And that's an amazing way to um, bring in a change. In, in the way parent-teacher meeting happens. And there is buddy system where the new student has to uh, gets to run through the induction program. And rooted, uh, when they enter the classroom, they do not wear footwear. And I was sharing this with you. They have a NRI-dominated society, which they cater to. and uh, But their school uniform was Pavarai Chapai. That is the traditional uh, dress of Tamil Nadu with a long skirt uh, and top for the girls. And they address the teachers as acharyas and they fold their hands and wish them with namaste. They use Tamil and Sanskrit vocabulary like vira for annual function. So, you know, uh, this is a, a form of branding which uh, uh, identifies a school, which uh, makes a school stand out. It's not that you're going against the convention, but as the management uh, and the school leaders, you all can decide what are the three things, what are the top three things people will think about when they think of our school as a band. So here they have taken self-determined, self-directed, self-regulated system of learning. And culture has evolved as a brand. As I mentioned, Somil also had mentioned that. Knowing that, you know, the culture, the branding, I have this wonderful mentor, Mr. Pala Subramanian, the former director of CBSE, and I have a uh, lot of uh, you know, deliberations with him and a lot of learning there. He said, Nirmala, you should also talk about future of education because you have all these educators will be part of this presentation today or sometime later. And let's leave them with a lot of questions. And he said, there are five factors that will impact education. He said, expanding spectrum. Today we are in 4G, 7G will come. Then what will happen? The, the speed will haunt. There is going to be high speed of access to knowledge. But will that be a quality knowledge? Will that be quality knowledge? Then emerging Amazon schools. The Amazon schools are like, you know, uh, there will be knowledge which will be available as pieces and students can pick and choose. What will be the role of schools? Will schools become knowledge cafeterias? Then there is cryptocurrency. A quick reference can be Bitcoin with artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. Trust me, this is my area of interest and I read a lot on this. And this will... Uh, will teaching learning in schools remain the way it has been existing with the intervention of AI and IoT? So then knowledge overflow, available irrelevant knowledge. Today you click and the child gets, you know, one word, 13 million links are there that the child can learn from. So irrelevant knowledge is more. So is the child equipped to shortlist the relevant knowledge? Then technology intervention to brain systems. It is, this is another mind-boggling uh, being from the science background, we had a lot of discussions in this. So we're sharing that biodigital brains where they, they're going to, you know, fix chips into the brain and that will load all the data. So do we really need to learn what is going to the future? We don't know. And we are also getting into telepathic sharing of knowledge where, um, you know, um, uh, somebody else will be thinking and you can write, uh, type what the other person is thinking. Isn't that scary? But yes, all these things do happen. And that is going to be the future of education with the intervention of technology. So dear friends, the strong schools are as important to our future as a strong defense. So what are strong schools? Strong schools are the schools which are sustainable. Sustainable, yes, uh, sustainable word is used in relevance to the environment mostly, I do agree. And that is also a very, very important factor. Along with that, sustainable in terms of culture. Will, what will they carry on for next five years, 10 years, 20 years? What is going to be the sustainable part? Trust me, everything is going to change. There's nothing called a sustainable. Sustainability for 500 years, we cannot even talk about it. So what are we talking about when we are talking about sustainability of educational institute? Sustainability of educational institute primarily means the culture of the school, how people talk about the school as a brand, uh, how children are the brand ambassadors, how teachers, the parents, the teachers who came for interview, they are the brand ambassadors. You remember this slide where we set all thinking with these questions? So we're coming back to that. So when we look at sustainability in school, 
we are definitely looking at answering these questions. It is more about how you have made each stakeholder, the management, the lead, school leader, the parent, the student, and the teacher, everybody feel about the school. So it, the culture is a very soft part. And a very, very prominent person I strongly follow is Jack Ma, and he says robots are going to replace 800 million jobs in 2030. Dear educators, it is an awakening call, and he says only by changing education can our children compete with machines. Education is a big challenge now. If we do not change the way we teach, 30 years, forget about 500 years, he's just talking of 30 years from now, we will be in trouble. We must stop teaching knowledge because as you know, a chip can be implanted. Sorry, that's scary, but true. We have to teach something unique which machines can never catch up. And these are the soft skills. He goes on to say, values, believing, independent thinking, teamwork, care for others, sports, music, painting, art, to make sure humans are different from machines. Oh my God, this was like an awakening. Just going back to the slide, 800 million jobs are going to be replaced by robots. And we say that we are raising students who are employable, who can do this, who can do that. And these are the things they are learning in college today. Just to conclude that quickly, I would like to conclude saying that we are raising our children with what we know for a world we do not know. Culture and branding of your school or college is not just your job. You are the managers of, let me quote, you are the managers of the largest human resource of our future. Make it more mindful. Sharing all the experiences of humanistic approach to education has added a lot of value in today's presentation and has left us inspired to do more. One person I strongly understand and relate, Dr. Daisa Kuikeda, he says, a person who no matter how desperate the situation gives others hope is a true leader. Here by leader, we mean everyone, the, the student, the teacher, the security guard of your school, the, the lady or the boy who serves the tea or coffee in your school, or uh, anybody in your school, everybody is a leader. And uh, I would like to close with an anecdote that Devani was, uh, Devani was sharing with me. She said, Nirmala, it's very interesting to know all these culture and other things, lovely things that is happening around. But let me share one wonderful anecdote with you that uh, she, uh, uh, she had announced in the school that you know, they would go around raising funds, washing cars. And there was this uh, uh, child who said, ma'am, I want to wash your car. She said, fine, I'll pay you 500 bucks for it. Uh, that's a big amount <laughs> that you paid. But uh, you know, she was sharing that the child went, washed the car, cleaned the car, came back. And then when she goes to see, she says, Nirmala, I had to spend double the money to get it you know, done properly. So what she was sharing is it's more about the spirit of learning to do something right. Culture is... A, not about just going about and doing something just because another school has done or another school is doing. It's about understanding what you want out of your schools and then uh, making, uh, trust me, take a piece of paper and write it down, share it with the everybody around. There is no harm in sharing and let everybody be engaged in creating the culture and branding of schools. So I take the opportunity to thank CII, Sajan Ashwini, and all the wonderful people who have given me this opportunity to share these thoughts and all the wonderful, wonderful teachers, parents, students, and school leaders who have shared all the lovely things um, about their schools that they are doing. And there are many more which are still dropping into my WhatsApp and uh, email ID. Let me see where else I can share those things. You can reach me on the email ID, which is there on this slide. And uh, Sajan, we are open for questions. Hope I could keep time.